Welcome into Courtside Seats with Kroger, a Charlotte Hornets podcast. Here he is, Chris Kroger. We got episode 20 of Courtside Seats, our podcast, and uh, we've been taking it on the road the last few weeks. It's our first long road trip of the year, and by the time you guys hear this, we'll be getting ready for uh, a big game on Monday night across the border, get, taking on the Raptors, but uh, we're in Toronto and hanging out with Jeremy Lamb. Jay Lamb, what's up, man? How you doing? Good, good. How you doing? I'm doing good. So we got your former teammate, now you're still your current teammate, on the podcast last week, and I think we had an unsolved mystery because everybody was wondering who was knocking on the door when we were talking to Kemba, and I... I guess I just found it was you who was knocking last week in Kemba's hotel room. Oh, yeah. I was knocking. I was about to... Um, <laughs> Kick in the door. Yeah, we was about to go eat. And I was listening. I was like, man... I, was about, I kept You should have just come in. You should just open the door. I was about to, but I heard a little interview going. So okay. I said, right, let me let me chill. Let me All chill. right. That's a good teammate. That's a good friend. It's funny because like, I showed up and Kemba's door was cracked. And I'm like, oh, I guess I'll just like walk in. And then <laughs> I was like, you want me to shut the door? He's like, no, just leave it open. I'm like, okay, whatever. <laughs> So I thought it was like maid service or something was coming in when you started knocking a couple of times. Yeah, no, nah, it was me just being nosy. All right, you were trying to figure out what's going on. Well, thanks, thanks for making time, man. How you how you doing? We're about a week into the season, and uh, it's kind of crazy, but man, three games in, and you guys are looking good so far, two and one. And that was a big win Friday night and Saturday. Sweep the back to back Orlando Miami. That's a big deal to open the road trip. Yeah, it was huge. Um, winning on the road is definitely always tough. So to be able to Get two road wins, definitely on a back-to-back. Um, you know, showed a lot about the team. Um, we've been playing with good energy. I think people are still trying to find their rhythm, um, including myself. But people have been playing good, moving the ball. Um, been playing together on both ends. Yeah. Well, it's funny because I think, like, we all watched the game Wednesday and we thought, Man, we're, especially in the first half, right? Like, my, Milwaukee got hot. You got to give them credit. But it's like, all right, where's the Hornets team we saw in the preseason? Then the second half, you guys fought back. And now we're thinking, all right, you open a four-game road trip. Are you guys the team we saw in the first half? Or are you guys the team we saw in the second half on Wednesday? And I think Friday and Saturday kind of validated, all right, yeah, that's who we are. That's who we want to be about. And so, yeah, I mean, even more than getting to two and one, I think the way you guys established getting back to the identity, I think, is, is pretty big. Yeah, um... I think the first game, we just we came out relaxed. Um, you know, I didn't play with as much energy as I should as being a starter. So um, I feel like, you know, like you said, the second half was a lot better. Um, and we watched film, we learned from it, and, um, you know, we really focused in on starting the games the right way. It was funny, though, because I remember – seeing JB's quote after the game Wednesday night when he was like, and he wasn't even asked about that specifically. He was talking about something else, but he was like, yeah, my starters just weren't ready mentally or physically for the game to open the game. And he challenged you guys. I'm like, all right, I want to see, you know, it's the first real test, right? Like, how do you guys respond? And I was talking to you about it Friday after shoot around in Orlando. And you're like, you're right. He was right. We weren't. And, um, I mean, I think you guys are a veteran group, but I, I just thought that was a really interesting dynamic where he was like, yeah, right out of the gates, you guys got to be better, and you guys listened to him on that. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we set the tone. Um, we That's what we're supposed to do as starters. Um, you know, one mistake I made was I let my offense dictate the rest of the game, and, um, you know, that's defensively and all that. So, um, you know, that's one thing you can't do. You got to get your – you gotta get your energy if things you know every night the ball not gonna go in the hole yeah um but every night you can play hard defensively you can your effort can be there every night that's something you can control and um you know that's what i have to learn um being a starter is you know setting the tone defensively because on the road defense wins games um you know you gotta you got to lock in on both ends. And uh, so I think we learned from that the first game, uh, first half, and, uh, you know, been playing a lot better. Kemba was talking about that last week. I think that's probably got to be like, you know, as you talk about like the maturation process of, a, of being a pro in this league and being a veteran in this league, like learning to keep your energy level high. And he was saying when he was even just a few years ago, like he'd have a bad day, not even something related to basketball, like something would happen and it would just like, human nature right like it just leaks in and it's affecting you 
And Steve Hetzel at the time was like, you got to leave that stuff at the door, right? Because that mm-hmm. stuff, people, other people start feeding off of it in a negative way. But like you're talking about energy. And I don't think people understand sometimes like just the grind of the league. And so, yeah, back to back when maybe you've lost three of five or you got to have this one or, you're, you know, whatever reason, right? Like you're just not feeling it to be a self-starter and just like manufacture energy. Like that's hard to do, right? Yeah, it's definitely, it's definitely tough. Um, you know, definitely like as the season go on, I feel like, you know, the season just started, you kind of get energy from being, um, excited from the season starting and all that but when you're 30 35 games in you're tired your body's beat up you know you got to really dig in and find a way to really bring energy every night because 82 games like if you just bring it one day it, it doesn't matter you got to bring it every night and um you know that's that's a huge part the guys you know the the guys that are all stars, they bring it every night. You know, Kimba, he doesn't have, you know, a night where he come out and get four points. No, he always brings effort. Um, you know, and he just he's he's the leader and you know, we, we really feed off that. I think Cliff used to say that like when he was here, he'd say like, Well, anybody could drop twenty in the NBA. Like guy on the end of the bench of every NBA team is capable of going for twenty or thirty a night on any given night, but the challenge is how do you do that, what, like consecutive games, right? How do you sustain that? And that's the difference between, like, to your point, guys that's sticking around this league, like Marvin and and Tony for 14, 18 years now, Mm -hmm. guys that are perennial all-stars, but everybody in this league is talented. And, like, I feel like your game kind of is a showcase of that. What you've done to mature over the last, you know, two, three years as you've gone through the NBA, like you've you've become that consistent player that everybody always said, yeah, Jay Lamb's got that in him, but now you've become that type of player. Yeah, that's yeah, that's the biggest thing. Consistency, you know, it's like it's tough to do at times. Of course you're gonna have some bad games, but um, you know, consistency is the key. And that's not just in the games, that's you know, the, the your routine. Um, that's you working out, that's you getting shots up, lifting, eating, sleeping, like all that. Um, if you do those things consistently, you put yourself in a position to be able to have good games and put good games together because, um, like I said, it's a grind. Um, but, you know, it's fun. You know, this is what we work for all our lives. And, um, you know, now we get to do it. We, we, you know, we play the game we love for a living. So even that brings energy sometimes. Just thinking like, why not give it your all? You know, you work so hard. This is what you love. Like, go out there and give it your all. It's, it feels much better if you go out there, win or lose, if you give it your all after the game rather than after the game, you ain't give it your all. You're mad. It's like, man, I should have took this shot. I should have worked hard to get over this screen. It's just, you know, so, you know, why not give it your all? Do you still have those moments, though? Like, where you show up to the arena and it's still kind of surreal, like, holy crap, I'm in the NBA and I'm about to go play basketball and 20,000 people are watching you still have, does that still hit you? It definitely hits me like at the beginning of every season. Yeah. Like, um, you know, when I, when I first got in the league, so I went from, I got drafted, mm-hmm. I'm on top of the world. 12th pick. 12th pick. You know, I go to Houston, everybody's saying you're going to be playing, you're going to be, you know, Rookie, um, you got a chance to be rookie of the year. You make the rookie sophomore game, like saying all this. That I get traded. Two months later, right? Well, two less months than later. Yeah, two months into the season, really. Yeah, well. Actually, right as the season was starting, before right. it started. Yep, I, I got October. traded two days before the first regular season game um, to the end of the bench, not playing, go to the D League. I never would have thought that I would be in the league this long you know it was times where I'm like man like 
I'm not that good, I'm this, I'm that. But just to be able to have been in the league this long, because a lot of people I got drafted with are not in the league no more. And, you know, you hear those stories all the time, but no, it's when so you true. actually see it and they're your friends and now they're hitting you up, man, I got cut. It's like, wow. So, you know, right when the season starts all the time and, you know, in the summer, whatever it is, just random times, I'm really like, man, like I'm blessed. Yeah. You know, it's crazy to be here and, you know, be able to go to the gym and work on my craft. You know, I don't have to get up and, you know, work a nine to five or um, I'm not, you know, playing for my life, not in the D league. Like it could be, you know, you're not worried about showing up and man, if I don't play well today, like I could get cut. Right. 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 Like I'm on the end of the bench. Like I'm, I'm one bad game away from losing my spot right. on this team. And I have been in no, I had been in that position. So that it's just a, it just shows like hard work really pays off, you know, no no matter what um situation you're in, what team you're on, whatever it is, um hard work pays off. So that's good. How do you how did you handle those situations? Like were you one to kind of live in your head and be like self doubt and not have that confidence and not not be a a guy like, all right, I can, I can kind of, you know, keep my emotions high, and I'm gonna have to just block all that stuff out. Or were you someone where, man, like you would, if you had a bad game or bad or bad stretch, you bad shooting stretch, you were kind of living in your head saying, man, like, what's wrong with me? What's going on? Am I gonna make it? Were you doubting yourself back then? Yeah, I definitely doubted myself. Um, I wasn't playing that much, but I was like, I was like, in and out of the D league. Mm-hmm. Um, at, at that time, it was D League, but I was in I was in and out of the G League. Um, you know, it was, it was tough being a rookie. You know, around a lot of vets, um, but I leaned on them to really help me. Um, and I kind of like instead of thinking like, man, like you know, this sucks and all that. I kind of tried to find my role in the team, even though I wasn't playing. And my role was to make the team better um, in practice. And when we would like scrimmage, like I would, I was upset like early in the year, and like I wouldn't go hard or whatever. And like then I started to realize like that's not gonna help me. And I just realized my role is really to help the team get better in practice because you know everybody was saying your time gonna come this and that and at the time I'm like you're not hearing that yeah I'm like whatever like that's what everybody's saying but I just kind of try to find my role in that and um you know I, I felt better about it um and like I said I leaned on my vets it really helped me so it's funny though because you're like you're the perfect example people say oh I change the scenery could do a guy good sometimes so like the horn is straight for you that summer this is now because you're going to your fourth season with us, so that was three years ago at the time, going into 2015, 16, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and you were, you know, you were that guy, but it's like, man, I see like raw, athletic, end of the bench in Houston and OKC, and didn't get a chance, and like he just needs a fresh, a fresh start, and you got it here. Now it wasn't always easy here either, because like early on, it was kind of, you know, Cliff was hard on you. He yeah. was really hard on you, and yeah. in the long run, it was for the better, but. You know, you could see the glimpses of like, okay, this kid, yeah, he definitely, he's got it, and he just needed, he needed a chance. So, what was it like when you came here and kind of got settled in? It was like, all right, here we go again. Now you're third team. Did you have that realization of like, this is going to be the one, or were you still just kind of saying, all right, let's see how this goes? Um, I was always like, I was nervous. I was definitely nervous just because there were times in OKC where I was playing well and I didn't get time. So I kind of thought in my head, like, even if I play well, am I going to get minutes? Am I going to, am I good enough to play? You know, just a lot of things was going through my head. But, um, you know, I was just thinking in my head, like, I'm going to just make the most of it. I'm going to try to, I'm going to just play hard. I'm going to try to take advantage of the opportunity. Coach really kept it 100 with me and told me, you know, um, this 
this is what he likes about my game. This is what he doesn't like about my game. This is what I need to improve. You know, these are things I'm good at. And um, he had high standards for you, though. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. He he really he he believed in me for sure. Um, and I just kind of uh, I came I came to Charlotte soon after I got uh, traded, and I just sp- spent a lot of time. Um, around the coaches trying to get to know them and stuff like that and it ended up being a it was a good year but it was rocky at that time because I didn't really know how to sustain play over 82 games yeah and um but it was good it was always a good feel um you know teammates were definitely great like I said coaching staff um you know were, were um they always kept it 100 with me it was uh it was good for me so so when you look at what's going on now like jb said when he came in here he's like yeah i want to meet with all these guys i want to talk to them i want to get to know them on a personal level so what was your first like beyond basketball where coach came in and was like i just want to know who jeremy lamb is as a guy because i've seen your game but i don't know who you know who you are as a person yeah um See, we went and we went and got something to eat. He, uh, I think he took everybody. Actually, you know, it was funny. So the first time he texted me, <laughs> so I was in, uh, I think I was in Punta Cana. Okay. And it was this guy in Charlotte that kept texting me. I, I don't remember why I gave him gave him my number, but he was trying to get me to. Make an appearance or something like that. Sure. <laughs> and so he hit me up, and I'm like, I'm like, uh, I ignored him. I'm thinking like, man, dude, this dude keep texting me. Right. Then coach texts me, and they had like it was a I hadn't saved his number yet because he had just he had just the sure. first time he texted me. So I'm like, I'm like, I guess I'll text back. I'm like, all right, I'll um. I said, I'll be back whenever. I, I don't remember when. But I thought it was the other guy. Oh, no. So, he, so he's like, okay, cool. So I'm like, so I'm talking to my girl. I'm like, man, this dude keep texting keep me. me like, yeah, like, I'm tired of this man. I went back and looked. I was like, oh, no. Oh, my goodness. I'm so glad I didn't go off on him because I thought it was the other guy. I was about to be like, yo, stop texting my phone. <laughs> but, um. But that was hilarious. I was so happy. Did you like, text him back like, hey, coach, I'm sorry. I actually, I didn't know it was you. No, I just. You I just kind of let it be. Yeah, I just let it be because I, all, I, all I had text back, I was just like. Yeah, yeah, I'll be back. Yeah, yeah. I'll be back. But if I had to realize that it was coach, I would have been like, oh, what's up, coach? Like, you that know, so ready to meet you. But, um, but no, nah, that was funny. I never told him that, but it was funny. So then we end up, um, we go and get something to eat. And we, uh, when I got back, we, yep. we uh, talked. Talked about basketball, and we just talked about, you know, life, just different things. Um, he talked about, you know, upcoming season, what he what he's expecting, um, you know, stuff like that. So it was it, it was good. What's interesting is like he t- he talked about this last week how, you know, you could go an entire year when a new coach comes in, right? Like new coach comes in, hey guys, here's the way we're gonna play. Uh, we're going to mix it up, and you guys are playing totally different on offense. I mean, some of the same sets, but schematically it's different, right? And he said, and I mean, it's apparent, you guys bought in from like day one. Like you just bought in, and it hasn't always been perfect, but you guys are in with the idea of like this is how we got to play, mm-hmm. and that's not that's not always the case. Like sometimes it's it could be a full year, sometimes it could be six months, sometimes it could be two months, whatever, but... Like, can you put your finger on why that is? Like, why have you guys, as a group across the board, been like, "Yeah, you're right. Like, this is a good idea. I'm in on it." Because it doesn't always yeah. work that way. Yeah. Um, I think we got a great group. We, uh, you know, it it takes. I think it takes years to fully, you know, like fully get it all the time or fully. Um, to get your offense fluent mm-hmm. and you know really know the offense so inside you're a ma- out. yeah like you're a master of that of that right. offense right but in terms of like just 
buying in, I don't think that should take long at all. And, you know, we, you know, when he put in the offense, when he put in this is how we going to play, if everybody's on the same page, it should work. So in terms of like, if, if he says, look, on the pick and roll, don't let him go middle. Or on offense, if you had a ball, drive, try to drive middle. Mm-hmm. That opens up stuff for, or like, you know, stay in the corner. It opened up shots for you. It opened up shots for your teammates. So it's like, you know, stuff like that. It shouldn't be a, it shouldn't take a year or two years to buy in, you know, because if, if everybody wants to win, you know, I, I feel everybody does want to win, then that, that's what you got to do um, to win. You can't have one person doing this, one person doing that. Um, you know, it don't work like that. What do you think of these practices? Because everything's like super high energy, music all the time. You guys are, like when you do your shooting drills even, it's like, all right, corner threes. One group on one end of the court, one group on the other end of the court. First group to get to 10 corner threes in a row, boom, you win, right? Like everything is sort of competition, high energy music's playing. Um, that's kind of different. So there aren't a lot of teams that even play music at practice in the yeah. league. So what do, you, what do you think of that? Do you like it? I like it. I mean, I, I like it. It's, it's, it's definitely days because music really sets the tone. It sets the vibe. You know, it, it could be a good vibe. It could be a bad vibe. Whatever it is, music can set the vibe. And um, there are days um, people are tired. People don't necessarily feel like practicing. People are sore, whatever it is. But you know, you get in there with energy, you playing good music, a, a cool song come on, gets you hyped. Um, it kind of gives you a better um, feeling about practicing. You have any issues with the playlist? Who controls the playlist? I've yet to figure this out. Who's who's loading this up? I don't know who be controlling it, but there are times. But there's that questionable I, decisions, I feel like, that are made. Yeah, there are times I have to go over there and, and um, you know, switch it up because... They don't always play what I would listen to, but what do you want? What do you, if you could control the playlist? What what would be in heavy rotation? Of course, Drake. Okay. Um, Migos, you're an ATL guy. Migos yeah, I'm from Atlanta, so Migos, Future, Young Thug. Okay. Um, but I like I like a lot of people. I like a Boogie. I like Lil Uzi. I heard some some Prince the other day. Like I'm a big Prince guy. So Prince. I, yeah, and mm-hmm. I feel like how can like. Prince's music's just got like funk and soul to it, right? Like, how can you not have yeah. some energy listening to Prince? Um, MJ, like Michael Jackson, like you can't go wrong with some oh, yeah, stuff yeah. too, I, right? I love Michael Jackson, but Prince, I, I've never, I mean, I've heard some of his music, but I, I'm, I, I've never like really listened to him. Like Jay like, Lamb, Prince is my I guy. I know a lot of people are gonna be upset at me. But, Jay Lamb, <laughs> is, this guy is like arguably the goat. Uh. Why'd you make that face? You just made a face to me. Why'd you make I'm that face? I'm just saying. I mean, he could be the goat in some people's eyes. But you don't eyes. know. Like, you don't know. You got That's what I'm saying. Like, I don't I, know. That's I need true. you to do this for me. I need you to, like, dive into, like, his his stuff. Well, I, You're not going to be disappointed. I, I probably won't. I, I like how he branded himself and yeah. all that. Like, you know, and I, I know he got good music. Great. Well, I know he got great music. Great I just music. don't necessarily have it on my playlist. Okay. So I'm not, I'm, you know, I'm not knocking him because... You know, he was he was good for sure. Okay. All right. So I like I hear some country in there sometimes too. I'm like, that's gotta be That's awful. That's and it's like awful. Cody, right? Like yeah. you're just doing that for Cody. That's the only and person you're doing that for. They did it for his birthday yeah. and all that. I'm like, that was trash. <laughs> oh man. Well, here's here's the other interesting thing. So you're uh, I was talking to Kemba, I was like, Kemba, what do you like to do off the court? For you, darts, right? This is your thing. You're a darts guy. Yes, sir. How on earth did you get into darts and so much into darts they're doing it like competitively you're in a darts league yeah um it's funny like i i used to go eat well i didn't used to i always like would go grab food at this this bar it was up the street um Mm -hmm. from where i live and um i don't know if you heard the game golden tea yeah so ultimate bar game yeah great bar game dude that i um would kick it with up there he would always go play that game and I would be sitting there like, and he kept coming over like, you know, if, if you want, um, 
I don't got to play right now. I'm like, no, you don't got to sit by me. Go play. Right. So. It seems like a bad friend, by the way. He just leaves you to go play Golden <laughs> Tee? Like, what kind but, of friend is this? But I'm not a female. He can go do yeah, it. He can do it every once. So I was like, so instead of like just sitting there looking stupid. Yeah. I went over, I went and I seen a dartboard and I just started playing darts a little bit because. Had you ever thrown darts before? Never. Never. I just did it so he wouldn't keep coming over saying like, oh, you want me to sit by you or oh, my bad? I'm like, I don't care. Right. So I started throwing and a couple of people in there because it's like a real, it's like a neighborhood bar Quarter basically. Bar. Like, yeah. yeah. And um, so I started throwing with them. They was killing me and they was like, you'll never be able to beat me. And I'm like. All right. All right. Let's find out. So I start playing a lot. We start throwing. And at first I was throwing house darts. And then um, this old man, he came in and was like, you know, like, I got some better darts y'all could throw. We like, for real? So he's, we started throwing his darts. We like, wow, these is way better. And Why, we they're weighted different or? They're weighted and it's just different material. It's just yeah. like better. Okay. And um, now I got like 20 sets of darts. Oh, God. How long ago is this? How many years has this been now? It's well, a couple I, I, years. No, nah, I just start. Well, I started last summer, so it's been a little over a year. So you're like a high level. You're a pretty high level dart player now. I'm straight. I'm um. Is there a handicap? I feel stupid asking you this, but it's like, is it like golf where there's a handicap or like bowling? There is a handicap, but I'm not. I don't use. So you're like just like a scratch dart thrower. You're just yeah. I um. So I'm like division two right now I've, I've played like division one you know teams and stuff like that but d1's like as high as it gets that's the highest no, level you can pro. play yeah pro is the highest so you're like sanctioned leagues this isn't like just yeah, like a bunch of dudes showing up at the bar and throwing darts you're in an actual like sanctioned league right so like i'll like just you know a random day throw darts just have a good time but dart league is on tuesday so what happens if you get a conflict with a game? We don't play a lot of Tuesday games. Yeah, so I'm a I'm a sub because I can't be there all the time. Where's Jay Lamb? He's playing NBA basketball. He can't be here tonight. Right. Sorry. In the summer, <laughs> right? In the summer, I he's can, in Toronto I can play playing the Raptors. <laughs> yeah, so, but I have a good time with it. I just chill. Um, you think it helps you with your basketball? No, nah, actually, basketball helps me with that. Okay, why is that? Because um, darts is like a feel yeah game um and i'm a shooter so like you know it's about touch mm -hmm. and you know just that that helps me be able to throw darts better man i feel like i always pick up darts i'm like i'm terrible like i, I just couldn't imagine getting better at it but it's all reps right like yeah. you just gotta throw a ton of i mean how many it's times fun. would you throw like when you were trying to get better how often would you throw like hundreds of darts a day uh i mean i never like practice we would just go and just throw for a long time see no no okay we're, we're done, i'm done talking about this no, that's really what, no, just... no no but that's what's unfair because it's like you're already a ridiculous athlete and then you're like yeah i don't actually practice the darts i just did it like every day yeah, and i just, just got throw. better at it you just throw like you, I, I never was just like on a dartboard like all right see but i feel like that's how you have to get better at it is like i'm gonna stand here for an hour and i'm gonna work on just like whatever i'm just gonna throw i mean if i was about to go on a Euro dart tour. You should do that. I want to see the you like during the summer. Like, what's Jay Lamb doing this summer? He's over in Europe on the dart tour. So what he's doing right now? I was about to do that. Yeah, then I'll be practicing. But no, nah, I don't. I don't got time to be practicing dart. What else you do off the court? You into uh, you into the fashion game at all? Like Malik's big into the fashion stuff. Him, oh, Wayne, yeah. I feel like he's getting into it now too. Kemba was stunting a little bit last night in, in yeah. Miami. Kemba, he's definitely fly. Um, he's low key though. Like he doesn't. He just shows up, and you're like, okay, you got like. Yeah, he wear 82 outfits a year. Is that right? Yeah, like he. Yeah, he he definitely loves fashion. Every every time you see him, like. Every time you see him on the bus, and like say he on his phone, he just be looking up clothes and looking up jeans and all that crap. Um, are you like, but are you intentional about like, all right, I'm going to the arena. This is what I got to be. This is what I'm wearing today when I show up. I mean, because so, I know it's going to be pictures. It's going to be on Slam. It's going to be on, on, on everywhere. Everybody's yeah. going to see what I'm wearing. No, I don't really think like that. There, you know, sometimes I'll put on something fly, 
But sometimes I wear sweatsuits. Like, I don't got enough clothes to wear 80, 82 Crazy. Outfits. Like, you know, it's funny. Like, when I was in OKC, Russell Westbrook, he never wore anything twice. Ever. Yeah, ever. 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 And then I come here. Kimba wear 82 outfits a year. I'm like, goodness. So it's crazy. I went to his house. He had a lot of shoes and clothes and so... But yeah, you know, all of them like to. Why are you a Paul George guy? I don't see you mess with anything else. Like, I don't see ever see you in a pair of like Kobe's or Kyrie's. Always yeah. Paul George's. Why are you wearing this shoe? Um. Well, the uh, I like it. I like low tops. Okay. Um, his, the PG ones are uh, low top, and they're they're just comfy. Like I like I like how they feel on my foot. There are times that I um. Like, the way I, like some shoes feel good on my foot, and then like as the year go on, sometimes another shoe would feel good. So at that time, whatever shoe is feeling good, um, a lot of the Kobe's, I I used to wear Kobe's a lot. I like them, but I can't always wear them because I have um, I have insoles, and the insole that come in the shoe are like this thick. Like they're a yeah, lot. Yeah, you're talking. You're talking like that's an inch and a half, two inches thick. Is what yeah, you're telling it's me. a lot thicker than a regular. So when you know insoles, you got to take out the insole and then put in your own insole. Right. But if if the if the insole is too thick, then my foot would be too deep in the shoe. Basically, yeah, with yeah, my yeah. insole. So right. It'd be a lot of Kobe's. I'd be like, oh, I need to get those. And then try them on. And then I. They, you know, they come in the box, open them up. The first thing I do is see with the insole. Like, right. I'm like, they mm. can't do it. Yeah. So, but I, I don't see you mess around with like a lot of like your colorways are clean, but I don't see you mess around with a lot of like player exclusive or, or anything, right? Like, um, are you into that? Or like, like, like what? Malik's been wearing like he, he's been wearing these Kobe Sharks. He was wearing a couple of nights ago. Yeah, he got he got great feet. Like, As they say, my feet. Yeah, they don't work like that. Yeah, <laughs> so. I gotta, I gotta, um... You take what you can get. Yeah, whatever feels good on my foot, that's what I wear. I used to wear a lot of, the, like, old Kobe's and just different stuff, but now, whatever feels good on my foot, that's what I wear. Just pure looks. Who's got the best shoe in the game right now? Just signature shoe. Who got the best shoe? Because I know who I'm voting for, but I want to know who you're voting for. I, um... I actually, like... Uh, the um, I like LeBron latest shoe, the sixteen. Yeah, I, I do too. I, I think those look, those those look. His shoe for a while, I feel like cool. was real. Mm, you well, know what I mean, it's real bulky though too. Like I'm just, I'm his, like you. His I'm shoes, in, his shoes are bulky. They're built for yeah, him because you're like huge. a robot. Yeah, right. Um, but I think those are like they're big, but they're a little. It's slimmer, more, yeah, to it's, me, and it's more like a mid now because he yeah. he had highs for a right, while. Right now, it's more like a true mid. Yeah, I think Kyrie's got Kyrie's. I respect his like his creativity because like the this overall design of his shoe maybe is it's good, but I think all the exclusives he comes out with are they're nuts. Yeah, and there's always something behind it too. Like yeah. he's always cooking up something with his shoes. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, he got some nice shoes too. He wore two sure. pairs last night. He, he wore one in the first half, another in the second half. Oh, for real? Yeah, not bad. Jay Lamb, it's nice good to see you, nice. man. Thanks you for, too, man. I know it's our off day, so thanks for taking some time. And uh, next time when you're knocking and we're recording, you just come on in, okay? Just <laughs> join us. Okay? Will do. That's episode 20 of Courtside Seats, and appreciate Jeremy Lamb making some time for us. And of course, if you've missed any of the previous 19 episodes of Courtside Seats, you can check us out on YouTube on our Charlotte Hornets official YouTube channel. Just search Courtside Seats. You could search Charlotte Hornets. All of our great content's being posted up there all the time. Also find us wherever podcasts are available. Same thing. Look us up and also in Apple Podcasts. And once you find us, not only subscribe, 
not only subscribe to get all the latest episodes, but you can also go in there and uh, make sure you leave a review and rate us up so we can uh, be pushed up a little higher. Everybody can find us and uh, make sure we get the word out there about the podcast. We will catch you guys back here next week. And if you're listening, maybe on a Monday afternoon, we'll have a game tonight in Toronto. We'll close out a four-game road trip in Chicago on Wednesday night. But we'll catch you guys back here next Monday, another episode of Courtside Seats. Courtside Seats.